Coming up, is a new drive through bad for downtown? And why the county sheriff is saying his time in the position is not done yet. This evening on Murrow News 8. Good evening. Oh. Good evening. I'm Michelle Harmon. And I'm Shane Merwin. Welcome to Murrow News 8. Pullman City Council members made a motion at Tuesday's meeting allowing city staff to negotiate a lease for a new Starbucks downtown. We have a reporter, Vasily Verlamos, on the scene to explain more about the plans for the Starbucks. Here I am at the former Oasis restaurant, which Forza Developments hopes to turn into the next Starbucks drive-thru. Now that would be the sixth drive-thru, or that would be the sixth Starbucks in Pullman, and it would be the second drive-thru. Now that drive-thru would start on that side of the building, where patrons would get their, would order their drinks, and then they would come around this way. Now this way, it, it would be a two-lane drive-thru here, and then if you can look behind me right there, they would, they would put a Starbucks building right there, where people would get their orders. Now, if you take at last night's city council meeting, Forza Development provided an overhead look at what the plan would be for that Starbucks and its drive through Now, if you can see that on your screen, there would be a major issue on the main street, which is bothering a lot of people. That would be tr a traffic buildup the same way that would be on Stadium Way at that Starbucks that's been an issue last year because of a backup of traffic that would affect traffic everywhere. Now, one of the people that had an issue with that is Ann Parks, the Ward 1 Pullman City Council member, who shared with us her response to, uh, for the reason why she voted no on with Murrah News 8. It's just simply that it's a, it's a drive-through location. Just the location that it is in is very close to a very offset sort of intersection already. It is not a it is not a squared intersection, and so there are that's an issue if we have traffic backing up into that. However, the uh, Forza will need to provide a traffic study, a site plan, and more, which will be discussed on a later date. For Murrow News 8, I'm Vasily Varlamos. Back to you guys at the desk. Pullman Radio, a 19-year-old WSU student was minorly injured after crashing into a home on College Hill early this morning around 1.30 a.m. Whitman County Sheriff Brett Myers formally announced he is seeking re-election in the upcoming primary later this year. Myers has served county sheriff since January 2003. You want to do a job that you enjoy, and I not only enjoy it, I, um, I really feel the job gives back to me. I think as much as I put into the job, the job gives back to me. And so. And with more mask news, the Kettle Falls School Board defied Governor Jay Inslee's mask mandate and voted Monday night to make masks optional for student and staff. The Moscow School District Superintendent Greg Bailey is set to recommend the school board to remove mask mandates. If the recommendations were to pass, masks would be optional, Bailey says. He has spoken with his administrative council about the recommendation and has received full support. The school board will vote on the issue February 23rd at 7 p.m. Heighten mass debates, Gover Governor Jay Inslee will address the state plans for transitioning to the next phase of the pandemic. During a press conference tomorrow at 2 p.m., many are expecting the governor to give a timeline about potentially ending the indoor mask mandate. According to Inslee's website, the Secretary of Health and Deputy Secretary of COVID-19 Response are also scheduled to attend during the press conference. 
Temperatures have started to dip. We'll find out what to expect on the upcoming week next to Murrow News on Murrow News 8. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Dad! You saved me. Dad? Are you okay? I'm fine, dear. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Ladies and gentlemen, on my drive over here, I thought I had to whip the sunglasses out. Sunshine is out and about today. Is that something we should expect to keep seeing, Zane? Well, through the end of this week, most likely. Uh, however, as the week goes on, we're going to continue to get uh, uh, weather continuing to dip. Dip as uh, it will be 44 degrees today, 46 tomorrow with sunset at 515. Now we'll uh, go on to, to the to the state map. I'll start here in Pullman and Spokane. Same temperatures, 44 degrees. Degrees. Then uh, in the Tri-Cities and Yakima, it's 55 degrees each. Over on the west side, it's actually not raining for once. Once with it being 48 and 50. 50 in Olympia, 48 in Seattle. Now for the seven-day forecast, we'll, for, sorry, five-day. Uh, temperatures will continue to, to uh, decrease through the week as it continues with, uh, with it being in the 40s. But then once we get to Sunday, we're going to dip a little. There's a 50% chance of snow on Sunday day, but it'll start more on Saturday night, go back into Sunday. And then on Monday, there's a 20% chance with it uh, continuing, and, and, but we'll be in the thir at 35 starting Monday. Luckily, it's going to be a three-day weekend, and we won't have to be walking keen through the cold. So, yeah, back to you, Shane and Michelle. Thanks, Zane. Find out where the high school girls basketball team is heading next. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, you, yes. your football buddy, your football buddy. You, the boss, the boss's boss. If one in three adults has prediabetes, that means it could be you, your barber, your barber's barber. Nice work. Thanks. Thanks. You, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker. On your left. Your cat jogger. Or you, your co-pilot. Your co-pilot's co-pilot. While one in three adults has pre-diabetes, with early diagnosis, pre-diabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org to know where you stand. The Pullman High School girls are going to the district tournament semifinals, and now for Wazoo Sports. The Wazoo men's basketball team shooting was continued one Monday night, and now they look forward to a matchup with the UCLA Bruins, number 13 in the nation, after their late game rally fell short against the Oregon Ducks. They're big inside. They, they, you know, FA and Mo struggle a little bit around the rim. That was, uh, we didn't have our normal low post presence with those guys. Um, but Noah gave us something there, and uh, we got some really good looks at three that uh, you just got to be able to make to win those games. The two teams have split the last two seasons with each winning at home. Michael Flowers has scored 20 plus points three times in the last five games, including a Pac-12 high at Oregon on Monday. The Cougs defense remains elite, ranking 21st in the nation in defensive rating. The Cougs have not won at Pauley Pavilion since 2009 and are 3-60 all-time at the venue. 
Now a little bit brighter news for the women. The women are on a roll as they brought out the brooms against USC. Crystal Ledger Walker coming up clutch once again in the second straight game as the point guard stole the ball on the Trojans' last possession to secure a 57-54 victory. WSU improves to 16-8 with the win and 8-5 in Pac-12 action. The Cougs will look to maintain their momentum against the Arizona State Sun Devils on Friday. If we're going to beat really all the best teams or anyone that we play, if we're going to beat really all the best teams or anyone that we play, we have to make those shots that, because that's what, that's what we're getting and, and that's what I think we're capable of. Wazoo baseball begins soon. Murrow News 8's Drew Ambergie has the story on what to expect from the Cougs this season on the Diamond. The weather in Pullman is getting warmer, so you know what that means. Baseball season is right around the corner. Head coach Brian Green has improved the team each season he's been in charge. So we're going into his third season, the Cougs have hopes for returning to Omaha. The fans are excited to get out and cheer. Uh, I'm super excited about coming to the games um, this year. Uh, I, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to go with some friends because, you know, I'm a first-year student here, so I'd love to see, you know, Washington State baseball. It'd be so cool to go and see. WSU brought in a top 50 recruiting class and looks to have veterans Jacob McKeon, Cody Colden, Colin Montez, and Jack Smith lead the way. Hitting will be solid, but if WSU wants to make noise, the pitching will have to step up considering they lost Zane Mills and Brandon White to the draft. Obviously an exciting group for us, bringing back six to seven regular returning starting position players who were a part of that offense, which was second in the league last year, hit over 300. Obviously, we've got 97 RBIs to replace and 19 homers or 18 homers and what that is. And two guys who left for professional baseball and in Manzardo and TP. WSU starts the season in Hawaii against the Rainbow Warriors on February 18th. They play their first 12 games on the road before they finally get to come back to Pullman and play Oregon State right here in Bailey Brayton. When Oregon State comes to town on March 11th, fans will have a chance to tailgate before each game of the weekend series, a new feature that WSU baseball will implement all season long. It will be an exciting season, and it's almost here. In Pullman, I'm Drew Amge, Murrow News 8. Recruits. I really think the Cougs have a shot at Omaha this year. I agree, and I don't know about you, Michelle, but I am sure ready for some sunshine and baseball. I am too. There's nothing like a good baseball game in the spring. Find out how you can make a difference this spring. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. He's tough enough to feed the man gave him a lifetime of nourishment. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. That's right, no employee of the month bonus check here. This guy, no, this boy, will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. Good luck finding a gym to train for that. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Donations are open in the boiler drip for the Black History Month book drive, according to the Daily Evergreen. The goal is to collect at least 80 books for the local elementary schools. Organizers are looking for books donated that are written by black authors and feature black characters. Student athletes will read the donated books to the stu students virtually. Thank you for watching. If you missed anything um, on this or any of our previous newscasts, you can always watch us on YouTube. More news can be found at our website or you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Have a good evening.